Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for coming back from uh, lunch. I hope uh, to keep you guys awake. Um, okay, so my name is Tal, and uh, I hope you can see. Uh, so we will discuss in this uh, in this lecture. I will uh, demonstrate how we can uh, use the insecurity of uh, Bluetooth Smart uh, to hack. Well, to uh, hack uh, smartphones using uh, the application level. Um, we will briefly go over the Bluetooth uh, security aspects, and then um, we will uh, see how we can perform man in the middle, active man in the middle uh, attack between uh, the device to the app, the designated app or any app. And then we see, we'll see a few tools and how we can uh, tamper with the data or uh, perform replay attack that eventually will uh, perform actions on our smartphone. Okay, so uh, my name is Tal. I've um, been working in the InfoSec cybersecurity, how you want to call it, uh, for more than 12 years. Uh, currently, I'm working with a few companies, uh, Apsic Labs in Israel. Um, CNAC, uh, if you know, bug, uh, private bug, bug, bounty, bug bounty uh, services, and uh, FBK, um, she's a research, European research facility uh, in Italy. Um, I also established, uh, besides Trento, we'll talk about it uh, later. Previously, I've been working uh, with RSA and Checkpoint, and uh, you can follow me at my uh, website, appsec.it, or my Twitter handle. Um, okay, let me just, can you see? Okay, let me just uh, explain to you guys. Uh, so, just a few uh, words about myself. So, I'm, uh, I'm from Israel, uh, originally. Um, recently, I've moved to Trento, Italy, which is a... Uh, very north uh, city in Italy on the on the Dolomites, and uh, I moved there because um, uh, my wife uh, it is my wife's hometown, and we just had uh, our first baby there, and uh, so I thought Geneva and Tento very close to each other would be very easy to go here. So I thought, uh, what would be the best solution to uh, to get there? It's a one hour flight if you measure the distance. So uh, the problem was that Trento doesn't have uh, an airport. So this plan uh, went, uh, went away. So I thought about, okay, next best solution would be uh, one drive uh, to Verona, which is one hour away from Trento, and then one hour flight to Geneva. But no direct flights from Verona to Geneva. Okay. What would be the second best or the, the other, the, possi the real possibilities? So what, should have, what would have happened is that uh, I plan to leave Trento to uh, Verona uh, and then take the flight from there with a direction, uh, connection flight and land in Geneva at 5 p.m. So one hour to drive to Verona, one hour I gave myself a security gap for the security checks, check-in and uh, traffic possibilities, one hour flight to Frankfurt, one hour connection, and another hour flight to Geneva. Total time, 5.5 hours. Okay, it's not great, but it's not that bad. But what actually happened is that 11.30 uh, a.m. I was leaving Tento, one hour later I arrived at the uh, Verona airport, then, after doing the security checks, I realized I forgot my passport at home and there was no way for me to go back and forth because I had no time left. So, I was uh, uh, thinking about the solution after trying to convince them to let me fly anyway, but it didn't work. Uh, so, I was thinking, checking trains, everything. Nothing really uh, came, uh, came out great. At 2 uh, p.m., I found a solution. I will go back to Tento. Uh, take my passport, get on a train to Verona, uh, from Verona I will go to Geneva, but the problem is it's a seven hours uh, train, plus it was late, so I arrived not at 11.30, but actually at 1 a.m. Uh, at the hotel, 
So instead of one hour flight, or uh, which would be the best option, it took me more than 12 hours to get here, but I'm still here. Okay, uh, I made everything to be engaged. No, thank you, thank you. Uh, made, every made sure that you'll be able to see this, uh, this talk. Okay, so just a uh, short acknowledgement. Uh, so I've been doing this research uh, at APSEC Labs. Um, we specialize at APSEC. So uh, IoT is one aspect of it, and we've been doing a lot of research in this uh, field, and this is just part of it. I would also like to thank uh, uh, Slawomir, uh, which is one of the pioneers of this uh, field, of the uh, BLE security, uh, which you can follow there. Okay, let's start. Uh, what is BLE? Shortcut for Bluetooth Low Energy, also called Bluetooth Smart, hence the uh, title. Uh, it, was par it is part of Bluetooth uh, 4.0. Okay, it is designed to be power efficient and smaller and cheaper. So now with the, uh, well, IoT now is everywhere. I'm pretty sure that half of you wear something that is related to IoT. Um, so it's designed to be smaller, uh, more efficient, low cost. So we can actually start developing a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff using BLE. Um, so... Um, we can find it everywhere, of course, wearables, watches, um, and then uh, at home, smart homes, light bulbs, uh, smart plugs, medical devices, uh, any other thing that you can think of. Think of. Um, okay, what is the difference between Bluetooth Classic, the, the original Bluetooth that we know, and uh, BLE? So they're totally different. They cannot talk with each other. It's a different uh, protocol. They have different architecture, different modulation, different channels, different packet formats, et cetera, et cetera. So when we talk about BLE, it's actually Bluetooth, but it's a different protocol. So it doesn't, it's not compatible, back, it's not backward compatible. Okay, so where is the risk? Is everywhere, actually. So just uh, probably seen uh, a lot lately with uh, smart locks. There are many smart locks with Bluetooth that based on Bluetooth. Uh, most of them don't work well. I mean, they work, but not uh, security-wise. But and if they are locks and they are not working security-wise well, then they are not actually working. So most of the locks. I'm not saying that all of them, but I've tested a few. Most of the locks would be just. Uh, we'll get to that later. Download some uh, gener generic BLE application scanner, send data to the lock, try to open it, or any other uh, method that we'll see later. But you can see now uh, BLE devices everywhere, so it's kind of medical equipment. I don't have to elaborate on that, but just imagine that you have, and these products are real, so imagine that you have some insulin patch on yourself, and with the app you can inject uh, medicine to your body, uh, so if someone hacks that, yeah, that's going to be great. Um, okay, so let's re shortly review the architecture of uh, BLE. Uh, it is based on three layers. Uh, controller, where all the actual controls are there. Um, so physical layer, all the chips, etc. And the interface for the host. The host uh, is actually providing the API for the controllers, uh, so we will be able to use them. Uh, and then there it's uh, hold also the infrastructure which holds the security manager and other um, security controls, and we will get to that. And the uh, let's call it the interface for the app layer. So eventually we want to build apps that will be able to communicate with the devices. So uh, these apps are built on top on the host and are using the specification that the host provides them. Okay, the security manager is the part in the BLE that is uh, in charge of the um, security of the device. So it's in, in charge of the pairing process, which we will get to that, and the, the key generation and the key exchange and the other uh, crypto uh, features. It has uh, AES-128 uh, capabilities. Uh, it uses 
different uh, types of key distribution. So here I'm going to distinguish that uh, this talk is going to discuss BLE 4.0, which is the most current used uh, protocol or version of the protocol. Uh, a more secure protocol was already implemented. Uh, it's BLE 4.1 and 5, which uh, is just now uh, getting out. And uh, so it is already proved that the key exchange of 4.0 is not secured. We're not going to discuss that. You can uh, see uh, talks from uh, Mike Ryan and other great talks that uh, demonstrated how you can hack uh, the connection link between uh, of uh, Bluetooth, for Bluetooth Smart, Bluetooth 4.0. And <clears throat> uh, the pairing process, which is uh, which uses a, a, um, a key to determine the connection link that will then encrypt the the, uh, the layer, the communication layer. So the first thing that you want to do when uh, you try to, or that you are doing that when you try to connect your app to your device, is to pair to the device. Hopefully, I al uh, already seen many devices that doesn't even use the pairing, that means that you can just uh, connect to them. So no pairing, you can just scan them, read data, send data, etc. Um, so the, the, the pairing is a three-phase uh, three process. Uh, pairing feature exchange, uh, then uh, short or long-term key uh, generation depends on the protocol and the uh, transp uh, transport of the key. I'm going to shortly review it, and then we'll get to the interesting uh, application layer. Sorry. OK, uh, so the first step when you want to connect to a device is that the device, uh, let's say that we have an application that is going to, to talk to a Bluetooth device. And so they exchange uh, capabilities. What is the capabilities is that each device has different capabilities of uh, pairing. And we'll see three types of capabilities uh, in a second. After they decided which or uh, what is the preferred uh, capability of each, or let's say, uh, pairing uh, method uh, that they can support, they uh, initiate the pairing process. So the second phase is that uh, the the, the master, which is the, the, the hosting device, is generating a short-term uh, key. The short-term key, short key is derived from the, uh, from the pin that, um, that is part of the pairing method. And then uh, after they determine the short-term key, uh, they are sending, uh, they generate the, the key and then they, on phase, one second, on phase three, then they distribute it between the devices so they can continue to communicate over a secured link. Okay, so how does that key is determined? There are three um, main uh, methods of uh, pairing um, methods between the, the device and the, and the application. The first one is just works, great, uh, great name. Uh, the fact that it just works is because the key is a bunch of zeros. Uh, okay, uh, this is actually, it sounds funny, but this is actually, I'd say about 90% of the devices use that. Why? Because most of the devices doesn't, don't have a screen to show you uh, another pin code. Or even if they do, they prefer not to. So this is the most common method, really insecure. Uh, the second one is a six digit uh, pin. You might see it uh, maybe when you're trying to connect to your car. Then you have a the nice multimedia screen, and when you want to connect, it presents uh, six digits uh, pin code where you need to enter on your phone, and then you can connect to it. Okay, still six digits, one million options, still brute force. Uh, we can still brute force that. Um, again, we're not going to to go into that. And the third method is uh, out of band. Out of band means actually using a different way of uh, key exchange. So that we cry, we uh, that we cry uh, requires. Sorry, that requires uh, the device 
to have another way of communicating the, the key. It would have been secure if the device would also be, will also have, let's say, NFC to exchange a key over a different medium or over a different protocol. But that doesn't happen because Bluetooth devices have Bluetooth uh, protocols only, or Bluetooth chips, so they can only communicate over Bluetooth. So I never actually seen that. Okay, it's in the specification but, uh, of the protocol, but I haven't seen that. And uh, I've tested a uh, few hundred devices, um, and I've never seen that. Okay, so actually, if you go to the, the documentation, it says that, word by word, none of the pairing methods provide protection against passive eavesdropper. That's great. What were you thinking when you were creating this protocol? Oh, okay, don't worry because the future version will ask, will uh, will implement uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange. That's very great of you, but I already bought the device. What will I do now? Okay, so I'm left with an insecure device and uh, with no way of protecting of protecting it. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so is it secure or not <coughs> in practice? Um, I say, I'd say that most of the devices doesn't use any type of encryption or any type of protection. L just like application, any other applications that you're going to use or any other technology, they just come insecure. People don't bother of implementing security. Of course, not security people, but when we go to developers, they don't do that. Why do they don't, don't do that? As always, it comes on uh, comes in uh, way behind uh, the priorities and schedule. Uh, but there are other uh, w other reasons as well. Uh, one of them is that sometimes there are uh, different users or different apps that needs to communicate with the device. Uh, sometimes the devices are public, some terminals or I don't know what, uh, let's say uh, a cashier or uh, some uh, of a kind. And uh, of course, sometimes security doesn't come hand in hand with um, the requirements or the capabilities, etc. Uh, but mostly it's lazy developers, okay? So security, IoT, in IoT is uh, ev like everywhere else, security not always implemented. Okay, um, so we're going to discuss not the protocol layer and uh, we're going to, to see actually how we're going to use the application layer or the communication layer uh, to uh, hack the device, let's say, or the mobile uh, application um, that is communicating with the device. To understand that, we need to understand the, the generic attribute profile. So each, uh, prot uh, each uh, BLE device needs to uh, implement, um, according to the specification, some kind of, uh, it's called generic attribute profile, or in short, GAT. You can barely see the green uh, titles. Um, so these, uh, these let's say, um, requirements specify the services and characteristics and uh, way, means, or um, type of data that the, the device is going to, to, to serve. So if it's, of course, if it's a, a phone or, a, sorry, a smartwatch, and you have other features like emails, etc. so you need to be able to, to communicate with it. So how the app knows what type of data to send, where, uh, which uh, service to, to connect to. So this is all, this all is, uh, is defined in the characteristics and uh, of the GAT. Okay, so you have a service. It has uh, its uh, decrypt uh, disc uh, description. So is it a battery service? So maybe it's uh, a notification service, etc. What are the properties that this service serves? So you can read to uh, read from it. You can write to it, and you can register to it. It's called notification, where you register to a service, and then you keep getting information. Um, okay, and then for each service, this is how it's uh, how the, the application knows how to communicate with the device. Typical flow of the uh, Bluetooth communication. So, a BLE 
is uh, because it's so power efficient and uh, low cost and doesn't require much battery, it's continuous, uh, continuously advertising itself. So um, if I want to communicate, to connect to a device, here I have a smart watch, we'll see later um, how we interact with it. Then, um, well, I'll say it's not that smart, but uh, it's called that way. Uh, so it continuously advertises itself. So, uh, hello everyone, I'm here. If you want to connect to it, uh, to me, uh, these are my, uh, this is my ID. And uh, when we want to connect to it, we just scan for Bluetooth devices on our mobile app. And then when we see the device that we want to connect to, we just click on it. Uh, they're, they're exchanging and trying to pair or bond, uh, depends on the capabilities of the device. And then after they establish the, the communication link, they start communicate, uh, send data over it. Okay, so how do we know? Uh, let's say I just found a, a device I want to connect to. Um, I don't know what it is. I want to, to know what I can do with it or how I can connect to it. So I can uh, do something like, like uh, that calls uh, discovering, it's discovering services. So after I connect to it, I uh, ask uh, the device to give me all the services and uh, characteristics of its services uh, so I can communicate with it. So here, for example, you can see um, a default, just a scanner, BLE scanner. It's a generic app you can download from the market. It's, uh, it works on uh, all the, the type of devices. And you can just connect to any device, of course, if no security, first security is implemented, and then start reading or uh, data or uh, writing data to it. So let's see uh, just a short uh, example of how, how it works. Okay. Okay, so this is the phone I'm going to use. Okay, so I downloaded, I don't know if you can see here, there are many generic uh, BLE scanners, uh, just the most generic of them. BLE scanner, it's called. Okay, of course I need to enable BLE and uh, Bluetooth on the device. And then I'll start to scan. Uh, there are many devices here. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that many in anywhere. So I'll just see what happens when I go to the first one. Okay, you can see it says discovering services and then I can start reading from it. So let's see what device is it. If you recognize it, don't worry. I don't, not going to do anything. Okay, it's an Apple device. iPhone. 8.4, yeah, I narrow it down. Okay, uh, other services, okay. So I can start reading these uh, values. Uh, they're represented in hex. Uh, I don't really know what they are, but it's not that hard to understand what they are. Um, okay, so this is the battery level. Let's see if I can read that. Uh, no information. Okay, and then there are many custom services which are not the generic of all the devices, but specific for these devices. And here you can see that I can try to read. I'm not necessarily going to succeed. Sometimes they require some uh, bonding or pairing, but not always. And I can also write data. So I can just send data to one of them. I'm not going to, to do that because I don't know what's going to happen. And don't want uh, to ruin your devices. So, um, but okay, so I have all this information. These are really some new GUID IDs. I don't know what they do. How the hell do I need uh, to understand what I need to do with them? So, first, if it's an Apple, an iPhone, I can just try using uh, my own device and see what, what they do. And then when I want to do that on someone else, I al already know what they are. And the second is that the protocol provides this. It's not 
just invented, okay? So this is uh, part of the protocol specification. So if, if I'm going to take this ID, at least the first part of the ID, or uh, the, yeah, the first part of the ID, and then I'm going to look on it, uh, look uh, for it on the, sorry, on the Bluetooth website. Then I can see um, what these, ID these IDs actually mean. So I can see that battery services start with one uh, ADF, and I can see that cycling power is 1818, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I can assume, or I can start to understand what these services are. Of course, this requires some uh, type of, uh, of uh, reversing, or how, do you, uh, how you want to call it. But the thing is that in many cases, these services are open for everyone to just connect to them, read data, or even worse, send data so to the device. Um, and they are just waiting for any device or yeah, any application to connect to it. Okay, uh, basic uh, BLE commands that we need to know. Okay, there are a few tools that you can, uh, that are built in in the environment, of, of, of course, after you install all the uh, BLE libraries. Uh, ICI config, uh, where you can uh, configure your, uh, your interface. HCI tool has many functionalities. Uh, to scan devices, you use LE scan. And uh, HCI dump, which gives you a dump of the communication over a specific interface. These are examples. So, um, one second. Okay, I'll get to it in a second. Okay, there is another tool. Wow, we can't really see. Uh, it's called GAT tool. Uh, GAT from the uh, generic attribute. Uh, and uh, it actually lets you communicate uh, with command line uh, with the device. So got to, you set the device MAC address. You can't really see that later. Uh, the presentation will be uploaded and you can see. And then you can connect to it, scan the services. So here you can see whatever we saw on the BLE scanner, all the services and their UIDs. And then I can just read these values or I can try to write to them. Okay, this is regular communication between, uh, with the device using a command line. Okay, but this is not what we hear. Okay, of course we can connect to them, uh, but we want to see how we can set them in the middle. Okay, so why regular man in the, why is it interesting? Uh, because regular man in the middle, the, the, um, the traditional man in the middle is not going to work here. Uh, the traditional man in the middle, we stand in the middle of between the application and the device, and then send or uh, playing the both roles for each other. So we're going to play the server or the device to the user and then vice versa. But in this case, it's not going to work. Why is it not going to work? Because BLE as a protocol can only serve one, uh, one purpose. So if, uh, if this device is connected to some other, to some application, you won't be able to communicate, to communicate with it further. So any other, uh, any, anyone tries to scan this device will not find it if, um, if it's already connected to, to the app. Okay, so it can only, uh, once it's connected, it cannot, uh, so it cannot co uh, communicate over BLE. So if I'm here using uh, Bluetooth and I'm connect to the device, I can no longer connect with the other side. Okay, so this uh, sets the limitation for the original uh, traditional man in the middle. So what we need to do is uh, to have two uh, components or two black men in the middle. Yeah, uh, that going to serve the other way, uh, the other side for each other. So we're going to have one Bluetooth device. Sorry. Yeah, one Bluetooth device here going to connect to the actual device and serve as the client or the mobile app, let's say, and the other BLE device 
uh, dongle that is going to connect to the app and going to serve as the device. Now, how they are going to connect with each other if they are, cannot use BLE? We need to use a different protocol. That's great, we can use any other protocol, uh, for example, WebSocket. WebSocket is, would be really easy uh, in that case. So what we are going to do is to use two components, two BLE components to connect to, uh, to, the, to the actual BLE devices and then uh, use the bell, uh, man in the middle over a WebSocket. <clears throat> this gives us the ability to perform an actual man in the middle between the device and the mobile. Okay, how do we are, how we are going to do that? Very easy, so I've got here two dongles. Uh, they are really small, you're not going to see them, but you can buy them on AliExpress uh, in uh, 199. So they are ve very cheap. Um, actually, it can work with one device, uh, but it uh, is not that uh, stable. So easy, uh, spend $2 more and then uh, it would be much easier. So we have this device, devices, or uh, let's say dongles or adapters, or, and then we're going to use two different VMs that are going to serve as both parties. So I'm going, I uh, downloaded Kali Linux, uh, which comes uh, ready or not really ready, but with a lot of tools that I'm uh, going to use later. And then I only needed to install some additional uh, tools and libraries. And then I cloned this, uh, this VM. So I have two VMs. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, let's try to do that. Okay, so I have one device, second. Okay, so I'm going to connect this BLE. Uh, take into consideration that everything here bought on AliExpress, so they don't really work that well, uh, but they work uh, eventually. So I just connected them to the computer. Now I'm going to use uh, to connect them to the VM. Okay, so I'm going to, to connect one of them to this VM. Okay, I can see that the interface uh, is, is here. We just need to... Uh, to up uh, to raise it. Yeah, up and running. Let's see that it works. So uh, great. So it works. Okay, other VM. I'm going to connect the other D BLE device or adapter. Yeah, great. Okay, so I connected each of the adapter to each of the uh, to the uh, devices, so to the VMs. Okay, um, so now I'm going to use a tool uh, written by Slavomir, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, really great tool. It's called Gattaker. Yeah, Gattaker, and uh, it uh, allows us to perform. Uh, Man in the middle, the same architecture as I uh, showed uh, earlier, two components uh, com uh, communicating with each other over a uh, WebSocket. Okay, so uh, let's start. Okay, so I'm running. One, so the slave is going to be here. And then let's start a uh, node scan. Okay. And then you can see that I scan a lot of uh, devices. What I'm doing here, what the scan does here is that it scans the, all the BLE devices that you can uh, reach and then say, stores their advertisement. The advertisement file is the, the name and properties uh, of the device. The one that shows the name of the device basically and the version, etc and then it stores it uh, locally in the computer. And then, uh, now I have the, the advertisement file. The advertisement file is just the one that is advertising itself. So when you scan, these devices keep, keep advertising itself. Okay, this is, the, the, this is the, the file. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to play or uh, to mimic this behavior from my VM so that when a, an application wants to uh, connect to the device, it will uh, see my advertisement first. Why will it connect to my computer and not to the original device? Because I already got, I will al already connect to it, so it will not be able to advertise itself anymore. Okay? So once I connect to the device, it is off limit of any other uh, application wants to communicate with it, but my VM, my other VM, will publish uh, itself as if it was the device. So now I want to scan the services and properties of the device, okay? So uh, I'm just going to use, I need, to the, I need the MAC address of the device. Okay, let's do something else. Okay. Sorry. Okay, and services file served, uh, saved. Services file is what I showed you earlier, all the properties, uh, custom services, uh, battery services, etc. So now I have everything that I need to uh, mimic the behavior of the device. So what I'm going to do now is node advertise and then use these, uh, these files that I stored when I scanned them. and the services. Okay. I hope it works. Now what happened is that this tool con uh, connected to the, to the device. Now comes the other party. Uh, Okay, so I have, when I bought this uh, device, I was, uh, been, I've been told uh, go to the market and download this power sensor app, which has all the capabilities that work with the device. So services, basically it's a, um, like a sport bracelet, so it can count uh, your, uh, your calories and uh, measure the time and how many, uh, push-ups you're going uh, you're doing um, etc so I'm going to use this app to scan for the device okay now I can see that I the power watch here I can see two power watches one second I think it's because it's disconnected okay yeah I can see uh, the power watch and when I connect to it I actually actually connect to the VM. So now this VM is actually man in the middle between the device and the mobile. So, uh, but one uh, thing to mention, uh, we can see here, well, I can see, you cannot really see that, but it specifies the MAC address of the device. So uh, basically, uh, how does devices remember who they are talking to or who they were be, uh, have been talking to is according to their MAC address. Okay, so of course, if I'm going to present uh, a false or uh, different MAC address when I'm doing the, the man in the middle, then one of them can get suspicious and say, wait, how can, can it be a different device? Uh, how does the MAC address uh, change? So what I will have to do, which is uh, kind of easy, is uh, do MAC spoofing. Uh, this tool also provides that, but that requires some uh, reset of the, of the Bluetooth. So uh, to save time, I'm not going to do that. And then 
I'm going to use uh, the same, just let the device connect to a different MAC address. Okay, so we can see that the device, this device keeps sending data to, to the mobile app. We don't really know yet what, it, what they are, but if we go to the activity, you don't see that, one second, let's put that here. And then that here. One second. Sorry. Okay. So I'm just going to jump rope. Okay. So I, I play, press play here. And here, of course, I need to jump. Okay. So when I jump, you can see the values uh, are here. And then you can see that it actually counts my. Uh, number of jumps yeah okay so this is the regular behavior now I want to modify this behavior so what I need to do is uh, hook to this uh, service and then run a script that modifies it in the middle so I already done that but Okay, so this is the function, the short script that is a thread mill hook. That basically what I did here is that I told him every time that you see these values, sorry, these values in the, in the data, in the communication, these are hex values, just add or replace the last two uh, zeros with ones. Okay, simple hook. Okay, now it's not going to work because this device is already connected. So, one second. Okay, so of course I'm going to do that in the beginning because I messed it okay okay so now I pre-hooked the thread mill activity okay, so I'm now going to run but what I don't show you oh that I run really fast okay and then I just, do, of course, in this case, no harm was really uh, made, nor for the device uh, or to the to the mobile app. But it's uh, it's working here on this the, this sport device. It might work on more critical devices, critical or in terms of uh, security or medical, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, it keeps counting, but. I just add a few, uh, modified a few bits there, and I uh, modified the data. Okay, so this is less interesting actually. Uh, the more interesting is that in addition, because we all love selfies so much, then this device, no, because you are going to use it to run uh, in, many, in many cases, so this device also allows me to take pictures. And then is where the part where it gets, uh, sorry, uh, interesting. So, so if you don't want to be on the picture, it's that the time to cover yourself. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to, okay. I'll flip that later. One second. Some coordination. Opa. And I took uh, the picture. I don't know if you can see that, but every time I click, I take a picture. Okay, so of course now it becomes more interesting. Uh, what, I'm going to change the data? No, in this case, I'm not going to change the data, so I'm going to use a different tool now. Although 
now the newest version of uh, Gattaker also supports uh, replay attack. I'm going to show another uh, great tool. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, it's called Beetlejuice. We're very creative with the names. Uh, okay. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm not going to show that because I'm, I see that I'm short in time, but uh, so WebSockets, uh, really easy uh, to use Burp uh, because Burp supports WebSockets. So all we need to do is traffic the communication from the computer to Burp and then route it to, these, uh, to the device. And then we can use the uh, WebSocket feature of Burp to just modify the, the data in runtime. Okay, so instead of hooking to the data, we can just uh, modify uh, each request at a time. Okay, so back to Betelgeuse. Uh, okay, Beetlejuice ha also has a web interface. Uh, so now I need to select the target. Let's see that the device is on. Okay, just light it up. Let's hope I can find it. Wow. Okay. There it is. Okay, so this app, now it's doing the same, it's discovering the services, uh, it didn't connect, one second, and uh, copying the services and publishing it by itself. Come on, you can do it. Last try, if not, I'm going to prepare the video, uh, of course. Real bummer. Okay, uh, that was the most more interesting part. Let's see, last last try. No. Okay, so I'm going to uh, move to the backup plan and show you the video. Okay, camera replay attack. 
Uh, we don't need the preparation. Okay, so I'm going to uh, select the same watch and then connect to it. Now, uh, every time I'm going to click and uh, start the camera here, it's going to send a request and you can see here the, the data here. And then with this tool, Yeah, so I don't have to be on the camera to start the, the camera. And then uh, I take the picture and I can see the request here. Let's call it request, okay? Uh, the, the data here. And then I can simply select one of them, right click and replay it. And then every time I'm going to click the picture, it's going to take a picture on, on, the, on the device. So I don't have to be there, I can just start once I have this, this uh, let's call it request, I can uh, start taking picture on pictures on your phone. And it doesn't hand with pictures because uh, the device also allows to play music on the phone. So I can also, let's see if I have that. Yeah, so do we have audio if I connect the Let's try. Probably going to make a lot of noise. No. Does it work? Okay. Let's, you'll have to uh, imagine that visualized. So you can see that when I uh, sent it, it started the music. So I can start playing. Don't know if you can see, but the, uh, the, the songs are going to change here. And I don't have to be on the app to be uh, to do that. So once I have that, if I'm sitting in the next room and someone is now presenting his talk, I can start his music on the phone uh, from the room nearby. Okay, so you can see that every time I click the notify here, it uh, changed the uh, the band here or the the song here. And I can start and stop. I'm sorry that the demo didn't, the live demo didn't work. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up. So we've seen Gattaker. Yeah. Okay, so we've seen Gattaker, a great tool by Slawomir, uh, which allows us to hook uh, to devices. And uh, also in the newer version, uh, allows us to replay, uh, to perform the replay attack. We can also use it to, uh, to use Burp, so we can just route the, the, the data to our computer, to Burp, and then modify the data in, uh, in real time. And then we saw B, uh, Beetlejuice, which has a, a nice web interface, doesn't also always work, but uh, when it does, it's great, and it uh, is one click from replaying atta replay attack. Okay, so we saw that it's not secure, what can we do? Um, well, if we're using an uh, insecure protocol, uh, then we are left on the application side to protect. Uh, of course, on both sides, we need to not rely on the data, perform input validation uh, if we can, and um, most importantly, enforce some access control so the device cannot just connect to anyone. Uh, we can start serve, uh, use a token on the first connection, so the first time, the first uh, time we have to click, let's say, on a button, then they bond the pair for the first time, then we store a token, and then without this token or without resetting the device, we cannot further communicate it. But most importantly, as always, encrypt, sign, verify, it's all, uh, it's, these possibilities are provided by the protocol, even 4.0, but they are not used, so do that. And uh, we're seven minutes from uh, finish. So one last word. So I told you I just moved to Toronto uh, recently. Uh, sorry, but I have to. Uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to, to, to launch a B-Sides event on Toronto, in Toronto. It's not going to be that big, uh, but it's, hopefully it's going to be nice. We're going to have some workshops and capture the flag. Uh, maybe not as cool as the ones Jordan shows, uh, showed us earlier, but uh, hopefully it's going to be fun. It's going to be in uh, November this year. Stay tuned. We're just preparing, starting now, launching it now. So uh, you can follow us on our website 
or uh, or on our Twitter, uh, Twitter handle. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Most of you are still awake. That's good. Uh, and uh, enjoy the conference, the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, we still have a few minutes for questions. So you said earlier that uh, you had to have two separate devices because it uh, was using uh, one side was the slave, the other was the master. Yeah. So you could not connect directly and do a man, a man in the middle. Right. So my question is, uh, if the device is already connected to some other thing, you could not do any man in the middle because you would have to kind of do the same thing as we do with Wi-Fi, which is de-authentifying, like do yeah. a de-auth attack and then rebind. Yeah, well, if, they are or if they are on the state that they are connected, already connected yeah. to each other, you would have to cause them to uh, deconnect and then yeah, reconnect. Yeah, and uh, how would you do that? Okay, so there are a few methods. Um, okay, so first of all, um, they're not always connected to each other because uh, in order to not consume all the power, once they are not at, in reach, they are going to disconnect. You can wait for that period, time period. But uh, there are also methods of uh, causing them to, to uh, disconnect. There are a few methods you can jam. Uh, you can start, I don't know, broadcast really for, uh, strong with your uh, with more devices, more adapters, and uh, let the device connect to you, uh, confuse uh, instead of the, the original device. But yeah, you would have to cause them to reconnect, to deconnect uh, from each other. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>